My name's Guy Kesteven and I've been a professional bike tester for nearly 25 years and today the bike I am super excited to be unboxing is the brand new specialised Epic Evo Expert. So I'm going to get it unwrapped, get it built up, put it in the stand and we'll have a look through the details. So here we have it, the 2021 specialised Epic Evo Expert and pretty much everything has changed uh, since last year. So big news, obviously completely new mainframe. It shares this mainframe with a standard Epic. Uh, so it comes in S-Works and standard carbon versions. S-Works gets 12M carbon. Uh, this, well, all the other bikes get 11M carbon. There's only a 98 gram difference between the S-Works and the standard carbon frame set. Uh, and you can't buy an S-Works uh, Epic Evo in the UK and you can't buy the Pro either. So this is the lightest Epic Evo you can get in the uh, UK, the expert model. Uh, but the frame weight, 1757 with shock, is incredibly light. I think that's that's pretty much the lightest frame uh, around, It'll, regardless of the fact it's actually got 110mm travel, not just 100mm. And it's got the Sid Lux uh, Select Plus shock in there. Uh, the lower price bikes get a deluxe shock in there. So you've got this sort of minimal uh, volume size chamber, super light race shock in there. Uh, I mean, it's not a remote, interestingly. It's a manual two position lockout on it. So, uh, you know, and there's no remote control on the front. Uh, the Charger 2 damper on the uh, Sid Select Plus fork uh, is all manual as well. So, you know, in terms of how you interface the suspension, it's very much a sort of trail bike feel. And the big news is, even though it's an Epic, there is no brain uh, on the shock of the Evo. It's a standard, you know, it's what they call the RX trail tune. Yes, it's a fairly firm and efficient tune, but there's none of the automatic brass mass inertia valve uh, brain technology that uh, last year's Epic Evos had. Uh, back end, as you can see, it's a little tight around this 2.3 inch tyre. You'd maybe squeeze a slick 2.4 in there, but you know, even with this low tread 2.3, this fast track on the back, there's not a huge amount of room. And there's, there's enough, you know, you're not going to completely wattle and daub up at your average English grassy cross country race. Uh, but, you know, it's not, you know, you're not going to chuck a 2.4 or 2.5 in there easily, certainly. Uh, it's a single piece back end, so there's no rear pivot. It's all done with flex in the seat stays, which is you know pretty common, uh, almost universal, I think, apart from the blur uh, when it comes to lightweight, short travel uh, trail cross country bikes. Uh, it's an all new back end. It's actually a stiffer, slightly stronger back end than the uh, standard Epic, but because you haven't got a brain in there, that saves about 200 grams. So this Epic Evo frame is actually lighter than the standard Epic frame. And you've still got a load of practical detailing in here. I mean, you've got the new SRAM uh, universal derailleur hanger. Uh, you've got this nice little uh, battlements of rubber along the chainstay protector to stop chain slap. As you can see, it runs pretty close there. So you need some protection on there. And, you know, single chainring specific, as you'd expect. I mean, S-Works Epic was one of the first bikes to go uh, single chainring specific. So obviously they've carried that over. Really, really broad pivot base across there. And then, oh, got some grass up there. Uh, little neat uh, U linkage there, just driving this lightened shock yoke on the back of the shock. And typically for Specialized, it's a direct mount. But as you can see, there's a high and a low sitting on there. So you just flip the chuck inside there, these little two plates there, they're really easy to do. And uh, that steepens the angles up by half a degree because the angles are dramatically slack for an XC race bike. Last year it was a 68.5 with a 73.8 degree uh, seat angle. This year, head angle 66.5 with a 74.5 degree uh, seat angle. Uh, bottom bracket height has dropped as well, so it's 336 now rather than 340. And I mean, back end stays the same, it's still 438 mil, which is you know, mid length, it's certainly not super tight and snappy. But uh, last year, the reach on a large was 440 foot, 446 mil. This year, reach on a large is 460 mil. So even though the seat tube is pretty long at 470 mil, uh, you know, there's still potential to size up and go even longer if you want. But I think, you know, most cross country trail riders, you know, fast trail riders are going to be reasonably happy with a 460 mil reach on there. It's certainly, you know, 
well up with the longer bikes in category unless you go to the proper freaks like you know the new transition or the uh, ns bikes or bikes like that you know white s120 which are definitely pushing things a lot further out um cotic flare max the bike i bought as a project bike and the cockpit has changed slightly i mean like i say 750 mil bar is the same but you're now getting a 60 mil stem really nice lightweight uh you know when i had the bike being made you can see it's a really thin wall lightweight stem and you're getting really really nice grips i mean uh lock on on the inside oh, that piece of grass is plaguing me today uh really nice uh very very fine sort of uh, mushroom rib texture on there and in terms of controls you are getting a, a g2 rs brakes uh, both sides you're getting specialized own dropper lever there and you're getting a uh, shram x01 throughout uh, i mean it's a it's an alloy chain set down there, but you know, that's a fairly tough option. And interestingly, they've actually gone for a steel chain ring and a, and a 30 tooth. So again, very much designed as a high mileage uh, chain set that up rather than a super light one. So you could probably save a fair chunk of weight by going to an alloy chain ring. That's probably one of the most cost effective upgrades you can make on it in terms of weight saving. Uh, again, at the back, you've got uh, an 1150 full Eagle uh, cassette. It's not extended Eagle, but to be honest, the riders who are going to go for this bike probably aren't going to want to deal with that massive thrutch up into the 52 uh, chain cassette tooth uh, that comes with extended eagle so i reckon i'm going to be perfectly happy with the 1050 on there and uh, big news i mean last year's bike at this spec level came with these uh, roval carbon control rims uh, i mean 25 mil internal as you can see quite a deep section uh, the difference is last year they came with a plain gauge spoke and a specialized uh, front hub and a DT Swiss 370 uh, rear hub, which is quite a uh, clunky, slow reacting hub. This year, it comes with a DT 350 hub, which has the star ratchet system. So you can see a lot quicker pickup on power there. And you get uh, DT Swiss hubs up front as well. So big, uh, I mean, the price has gone up from last year, but you know, things like the hubs, like the spokes, uh, makes a much lighter wheel set. I mean, it's a 193 kilo front wheel, complete with rotor and tire and tube and everything in there. And then 237 on the back wheel. So a respectably light wheel set, and that's only going to get lighter uh, as you convert it tubeless. And you get all the tubeless valves and kit and everything in the uh, sort of welcome package you get with the bike. Uh, like I say, I've already mentioned the dropper post remote up there, and you get an X-Fusion Manic dropper post, 100 on the small, 125 on the medium, and then 150 on the large through to the extra large. And you get this really nice specialised body geometry power saddle. I mean, let's face it, I haven't actually ridden one of these, but I have heard nothing but praise uh, from people who have, certainly on the road. And it's interesting to see them uh, coming onto this what is an XC platform here, which there's probably going to be a fair amount of crossover in the demographic. People who ride this bike for proper high speed kicks on the trail and, you know, in marathon racing as uh, riding on the road as well. So interesting to see that shorter, broader saddle profile appearing here. Some nice practical detailing here. You know, the uh, seat clamp slots are on the side, so there's no spray coming in from the rear wheel and getting into your frame. Uh, you know, really good quality bearings throughout. And it's hard to see in there, but that is a threaded bottom bracket in there. So, so really durable, uh, easy to service uh, bottom bracket set up there. And again, I say it's a uh, steel chain ring on there. Uh, you've got uh, three bottle cage mounts there. So you can have the bottle high, you can have your bottle low. And there's a second bottle cage mount there. Uh, it actually comes with the uh, specialised uh, SWAT mini tool just on the back of the cage. You get the cage with it. So that's a nice little inclusion there. I mean, it's not... It's obviously not a swap frame with a gap in the uh, down tube for storage, but you know they are thinking of that easy portability, sort of self-contained bike there. So as I was saying, it's a RockShox Sid Lux rear shock there. They're specific lightweight cross-country uh, shock, uh, slightly smaller chamber diameter. It gives a it's the way it's set up. It gives a 2.8 to one. Uh, leverage uh, ratio and it's a 40 mil stroke on there it's actually a shorter stroke for more travel than it was last year so last year was a 51 mil stroke uh, with 100 mil uh, which worked really really well when it was off the brain the back end of the epic evo worked superbly well uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes i'd expect a fairly tight feel from that especially with this uh, you know flex day rear end and then up front you've got 120 mil travel courtesy of this sid select plus uh fork up front it's the 35 mil leg sid so the tougher stiffer 
I'm an absolute fanboy of this fork, so the only real difference between this and the top fork is that you've got a uh, slightly heavier weight damper in there uh, rather than the super lightweight uh, one in the SID Ultimate. And then, the, like I say, the, one of the few things that didn't change uh, this year, you've got a specialised ground control uh, tyre up front, 29 by 2.3, and it's in the control carcass, so the slightly lighter carcass. And although it did have a specialised fast track tyre on the rear, Last year, uh, so this really fast rolling, you know, speed generating tyre on the back. Last year it had a grid carcass on it. This year they've gone to the lighter control carcass on the rear as well. And that brings the whole bike in at 11.39 uh, kilos, as you see it there, uh, a large hanging on the scales uh, with no pedals on. Uh, but it's got, like I say, it's got tubes in it at the moment, so you probably save at least 200 grams by going to tubeless on this setup if not probably yeah if not more so uh, i'll weigh it again once i've got the valves in there and the sealant in there uh but you know this is a seriously light piece of kit uh but still with some pretty capable uh gear on there like the dropper you know 35 mil leg fork and you know certainly reasonably chunky tires in terms of girth all the press offs I've seen on it so far, I mean, I've been on the waiting list for this for a long, long time. Massive thanks to Specialized for eventually finding me one, uh, you know, taking one out of their sales stock and sending it up to me to test. I've been gagging to ride this bike ever since I heard about it because I've always loved the kind of epic approach. But the fact they've gone all out and they've taken the uh, brain off it, I can see as being a, as a real positive for control and more sort of technical, faster paced uh, cross country uh, trail rides and of course you've got this uh, much slacker much st more stable and confident geometry now as well so there you go uh, that's the up close and personal uh, before I've ridden it on this new specialised epic Evo Expert uh, I mean as you can see much more of a real trail focused but still very lightweight very sort of you know, it's got all that XC DNA in there like I say it's actually lighter the frame set than the full X than the full epic race bike because it hasn't got the brain in there but with a much more kind of trail slanted geometry and enough trail kit on it to give it some real bite and some real aggression to uh, follow up that geometry on the trail so really I oh, oh god I'm sick of listening to myself say I'm really excited about riding this but I am I'm gonna be super stoked to get on this bike uh, as soon as my gammy legs healed and yeah obviously I'll be bringing you a live ride review as soon as that happens and you know it's been a busy year for Specialized. They've uh, you know we've already had the secret status coming out. Uh, we've had this coming out. Obviously it was an Olympic year for the Epic Evo. Uh, you know didn't get the chance to show it there. And they're not done yet. But I can't tell you more about that uh, at the moment. That'll be revealed shortly. But for now, uh, I've been Guy Kesteven. Uh, thanks very much to Specialized for sending in this uh, test bike. Like I say. But uh, test bikes are like hen's teeth at the moment, super rare, so massively appreciate the guys down at Specialized UK for sending the bike in for test. Uh, thanks to you guys for watching. Huge thanks as always to my Patreon supporters who are sponsoring the channel on a monthly basis and they get behind the scenes stuff, they get uh, extended early edits and sort of a, a higher level of feedback from me in terms of tech, in terms of buying advice if they want it based on my experience as a bike tester. So, uh, nothing more to say really, but Thanks to you guys for watching. Please subscribe, click for notifications, uh, tell your mates all about it, and uh, get ready for the live ride on this, because, uh, yeah, I mean, Agro XC bikes is my favourite category, so the more of them are coming out, especially from big players like Specialised, well, that's all good news as far as I'm concerned.